This young lady has been with us. The last time this lady was with us was March the 30th. Yes, March the 30th. See, I take, I take notes on everything. I got notes. Matter of fact, she started us off this year. It was the first Wednesday on January the 5th. She started us off the first Wednesday this year. She started off, and her topic was what? Uprooting. Dig up, <laughs> digging up the roots. Boy, that was so powerful. I still got it. Well, without further ado, let me describe our guest speaker. I've got kind of gave you some things about her. She lives in Southern California. She, her husband is Stefan, has spent some time at a private party in, in Beverly Hills with them for Mr. Nelson's birthday. Got a chance to give him a cigar and change a little conversation. She has a teenage daughter and son. She loves working with kids. She she loves having a good time. Don't get her and Jen Olson together. It's, it's, it's over. Checkmate. She loves <laughs> she loves CrossFit. <laughs> She's on her RVP run, not sprint, but run. She says, Mr. Tom, I'm going to run right past RD and go right to RVP. Without further ado, from Southern California, Miss Heather Perry. Thank you so much, Mr. Thomas, for, I love how you put that in there. She is running to RVP. See, he's even training you and teaching you how to think, even if you might not have said that to him. So I got to think, I'm running right to RVP. <laughs> There's no faking the funk here. I'm just telling you, that's what happened. But um, good morning, family. I am so excited to do this call. You are family. We get to spend time with each other every morning. Mr. Thomas, thank you so much for putting this call together. It's calls like these that have impacted my life. God has used these calls to help me grow and to become better. So thank you for allowing me to come and speak and to be able to give back to people um, on these calls. And thank you, Mr. Jabri Clemens for putting up with my last minute uh, video that I gave you. Thank you for doing that. So um, you guys, we are going to get into something. My rule, remember, whenever I train on a leadership call like this, my rule is, you know, I don't talk about anything unless I've actually gone through it. And no, you won't catch me training on anything that I don't actually have gone through and know and had the personal experience. So everything you hear will be something I've gone through or what's happened to me. So I hope that it's helpful. So we're going to talk, the title of my message today is the grace to grow the root of comparison. And it's hard for me not to train something without getting to the root of something because you're not able to run with the ACN coaching or training if you don't get to the root of some of these things. That's been my experience and I've seen other people's experience too. So it's the grace to grow, the root of comparison. When you think of comparison, comparison is such an unproductive mental state. It's an uncreative mental state when you're comparing yourself to others, comparing your business to others. So uh, Mr. Debrie Clemens, we're gonna start with that video to get us started. And then I'm going to come back and we are going to talk. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us a new in who? Christ Jesus. And he does that so we can do something. So we can do the good things that he planned for us a long time ago. You can't do the good things not liking what God's given you. You cannot do the good things he planned for you and you are comparing yourself to everything and everyone and every other and not looking at what God has placed in your hands. All you have is all you need, but yet you are disgruntled about what God's put in your hand and you're still not even using it. But you're still using your sight and your ears and you've been cuffed to comparison. So I need to say it to you today. Some of my points is like, bah! just right there but but i need you to hear me say this and I, I i'm saying it because this is something i was cuffed to for years it, it, it wasn't just until the last probably four or five years that i've been uncuffed from caring what anybody thinks about what god is doing in my life why because looking at your lane makes me stumble in mine <laughs> if i'm so focused on every step you taking and every step that you gaining and how far you are behind me, 
then I will stumble on the thing that God has called me, the lane he's called me to run in. Today, I'm going to set you free. That's why this is a point everybody needs to write down and get in your mind. Nobody's ever told you this. But compare products, not people. I'm fine with you deciding do you want Clorox or, 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 or Tide. Figure out which one. That, compare those. Try them. I'm fine with you deciding if you want Chick-fil-A or Popeye's. Compare, you can compare those all day. But me or you? Your church or their church? Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. This boss or that boss, like, compare products, not people. God never calls a product in the Bible a masterpiece. But he calls every human creation. A ma- Somebody say, I'm a masterpiece. And I'm going to keep saying it this whole time because some of you have been so wore out by the world and your own comparison that you don't even feel it no more. You, you, don't, you don't even like you. Okay. I see it when when, when you're sitting there and and there's breath in your body, but you still will not come places because you don't want to be compared to how you looked in a different season. You, you, You won't even show up to do what God's asked you to do. Yes, your first time. Stop comparing your seed to somebody's tree. Why in the world are you here? Knowing this is your first time ever public speaking and you want to sound like me? This is 12 years of failure. Like, like, but you won't start on your first step because you're comparing yourself to somebody who inspired you. Be careful how much you listen and look to people who are so great if your self-esteem is not so solid. <laughs> Because what it will do is rob you of the first steps that you need to make and you're being so critical. That's what I need to do. I need to do cuff to critical as well. Because some of us are so critical of ourselves that we won't even give ourselves the grace to become. No baby comes out the womb walking. No matter how big the baby is. You can have a 14 pound baby. And that mug going to still be youngest, just limp, limp. Why? Because growing takes time. And if you don't stop comparing your business and your idea and your family and your pictures, you can't pay for a professional picture. It's all right. Set up that Polaroid and take a picture of you and your family. You might need a stick to do it. But I'm, what I'm saying is, you may be missing out on what is the greatest area of your contentment. Uh-oh. All right. Okay. Okay. So when he's talking about looking at your lane or looking at someone else's lane makes you stumble in mine. Now think about, it. do you do this? Do you compare your business to others? Do you compare where you're at to others? Now, health competition is good. I'm not saying competition is bad, but it needs to be healthy competition. Now, what do I mean by that? Now, if someone is moving forward, they're in production, doing great things, you know, are you genuinely happy for their production? Are you genuinely happy that they're moving forward? Does them choosing to take action, does it genuinely cause you or inspire you, encourage you to move? Oh, you know what, man, so-and-so, they're doing all these great things. That makes me want to like take action. Or does it have an opposite effect? That used to happen to me. Does it kind of like when you're seeing promotions, maybe you're at Saturday training and you're listening to this promotion, that promotion, or this team's going good. And you're kind of like, man, look at you. You're still over here. I mean, you're still a customer qualified. You're still in ETL. And it kind of makes you go inward, almost like you're embarrassed. 
and it comes out when you talk to people like you're you're so embarrassed if you're talking to an rd rvp like you don't even want to talk about your business because you're so embarrassed of like where you are because you're comparing just something you know to think about um example on a funny example on fourth of july we had some games we did and there was a pie eating contest and they were super competitive these guys it was all guys and it was one girl and the guys were really competitive like crazy competitive i mean it's funny but it was like a lot where this one guy he was asking all the questions and he was ready and everyone was like down and and he kept saying and he kept, he kept looking at the other pies and i was one of the refs so i'd be like super tough and he was just like you know looking he was looking over here to the right and he was looking at the pie and he was started saying hey hey you know these don't look the same da, 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 da. okay so anyways we started and then as they go they're going to town eating eating you know what he was doing instead of focusing on his lane he would eat, eat eat and he was getting very far even though it looked maybe like he had more pie maybe like by a little bit he got really far but you know what he kept doing looking at the guy next to him, eating, eating, eating. I'm like, dang, he's getting far. I mean, he's the one that was complaining the most and comparing most, but you know what I kept seeing him do? Looking, looking. And I was like, I wanted to say, man, keep going. Stop looking over there. Like you're actually getting far. Like all this talking you're doing and all this looking, I was like, he's losing seconds. He's losing seconds by doing that. And guess what? It came and guess what? He did all that complaining and all that. That's he came down, they were the top two, the person that he was looking at and him. I'm not kidding, this just happened on 4th of July. The top two. And you know what separated him? He lost by just that guy next to him because we could see the bottom of the tin. One little scrape, we could see the bottom of the tin. But because he did so much of this, he probably could have done that too. And we would have been like, dang, they're both at the same. But he kept looking at what the other person was doing and losing seconds he 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 did well so i was like he was comparing okay another example so someone's production someone's promotion in a healthy way that is supposed to when you're sitting there and you're listening to that and maybe things aren't happening in your business that's supposed to move you to like wow thoughts like man, if they can do that, we're all doing the same system. We're all getting trained the same way. We're all getting told the same things, man, I can do that too. You know, maybe you have a friend like right now, uh, Jennifer Olson, she's in production. She's doing great things. Her team is like blowing up and it's awesome. You know, I could be, and we're, and she's a very close friend of mine, like a sister. I could be like, mm -hmm, just kind of feeling bad about myself or like, yeah not genuinely happy for her or kind of feeling like, you know, embarrassed. I got to be in some type of competition with her. This happens with people. This used to happen with me way back in the day when we would have to, when we would go to in-person trainings, uh, I would sit there a Saturday after Saturday embarrassed because I was not one of those promotions. I was not in production. I was seeing people move up and I was just in the same spot after time. I was not moved or inspired to move into action when I saw those promotions. That's a very unhealthy thing. Just so you know, if anyone's feeling like this, if this doesn't apply to you, that's fine. This might apply to someone on your team. So still pay attention, but I was not moved or inspired to do better. I was just continually putting the hammer down on me and why I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do and getting more and more embarrassed with each time. It was like torture inside. Sometimes I would have like this bad attitude of going to training because I was like, man, I don't want to go to training and hear all those promotions and just be embarrassed again. No one was telling me that. No one said, why are you here at training? You're just in the same spot. Why are you here? That was me. That's what I was telling myself in my head. Why? Okay, so you got to be okay with where you're with where you are and just take a self evaluation. Okay, maybe it's kind of like, okay, I'm pretty good at customers or I'm pretty good at uh, speaking, but you know, what? I need work in presenting or I need work in doing testimonials. Okay, no biggie, no biggie. You know, we in our head, we make it so big and we just put so much to it. You know, so no biggie, but what's the remedy for that? If you're so, so okay at customers or so, so okay at presenting, what is the remedy for getting better? It's a really simple answer. What is the remedy? If you're kind of weak in an area of ACN, maybe you're not so good at 
piquing people's interest or recruiting or you're not so good at presenting, what should we do? You can put it in the chat. I mean, it's really easy. You're not so good at whatever these skills are. What should we do? Oh, Jennifer Olsen. That's the word I'm looking for. Practice. Why don't we think of this? Why do we go in our business and kind of just compare and go, wow, they're really good at presenting. I couldn't do that. Or I can't present as good as, or, you know, recruiting that that's, man, they just got to think for it. Practice. We're all here learning skills to strengthen skills. Why don't we think of it as simple as that? It's like, oh, I better practice. I better uh, go over the presentation. We think of it for other people or if people do a sport. It's like, well, yeah, of course they're good. They practice all the time. They're always training. Same thing here. Don't count yourself out and just think, whoa, Mr. Thomas is so good. Or, or an RD that you look up to, whoa, they, I mean, I just, I mean, I can't do that. Why do we do that? Think about that, right? Practice, practice, that's it. Not sit there and have a, a mental abuse, you know, conversation with yourself, how you're, you're so not this and you can't this and all of these reasons why we, we all, we all have the same ability to learn these skills. So it's so important to remember that when you're seeing someone who might be moving ahead of you, or maybe they're moving really fast, or you're just like, man, I see progress everywhere I go, but I have not we cannot think that. Do not compare. You're in a you're such you're in a different place than other people. I'm gonna look down at my notes. I don't want to miss anything. Okay. So it's time for you to step up to the plate. Do yourself a favor. If it's your if it's your turn to say now it's time for you to present or it's time for you to train and you're like Ugh, because you're already comparing. Do yourself a favor and do the presentation, do the training, you know, you might surprise yourself, you might do, you might do really well, better than you thought, or you know what, you might mess up, yeah, you might mess up, you know what I say to that, good, I hope you do, because now at least you're doing it, at least you actually are getting yourself out of your comfort zone, at least now you're practicing, another example, Ms. Jocelyn Driscoll, she's my coach, and when I restarted, got started back in the business and I hadn't done a lot of training, I hadn't done a lot of presenting, I hadn't done a lot of uh, like public speaking calls at all. And then we can't, and then Zoom happened. So, you know, I wasn't knowing how to do that either. So she started putting me on the nationwide overviews. And she said, you're going to say these three questions that, questions that we say before, um, when we open and you're going to play the video. And I said, what? Play the video in front of the whole nation? I'm like, okay. So guess what? It, I did it for every week. And guess what? I messed up the whole month with the video. I didn't do it right for a whole month in front of everybody. But you know what was happening? I was practicing, right? So how would I have been able to even know how to share a video on Zoom if I didn't actually do it, if I didn't actually practice, if I don't actually put myself, you know, if I didn't allow her to put myself in that situation? Practice. Well, guess what now what I can do? I could share a video. I could share slides. I couldn't do that before. So don't worry if you're going to present, if you're going to train, don't compare yourself to somebody that's been doing this for 10 years. You know, if you look at Mr. Al Thomas or, or you know, Mr. Julian Lewis, when they're presenting, don't think, well, it, well, you know what? They make such an impact. And so, oh, what am I going to do? And I'm like, that's comparing. Stop. You, if, if they have asked you to present, if they've asked you to be a testimonial, they asked you for a reason. Maybe they see something in you. Maybe they say, hey, I want to develop them. Maybe they see, you know, they'd be really good. They're doing A, B, and C but you are holding yourself back and you're comparing and you're stopping and you're stopping your progress and you're stopping your ability to be able to practice. Yes, I know it's in front of people. Oh, well, you're stopping that from happening, which is going to allow you to become better. So stop. If you're doing that today, it's time to stop and it's time to just get uncomfortable and just do the thing and know, hey, I just need practice. Not so complicated in the head. Stop being so hard on yourself. Just I got to practice. These are skills that can be learned. What about thoughts like that? We've got to have start having growth thoughts like that. 
these are skills that can be learned and I can learn them. And not everybody came into this business with those skills, but guess what? Hey, we have great leadership. They're going to teach me. Hey, this is just a skill I need to learn. Let's do it. How about that? Instead of all the crazy, 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 right? So some of us, like he said in the sermon, some of us are so critical of ourselves. Ask yourself, are you critical with yourself? And if you are, ask yourself, why? Why are you so critical of yourself when you are about to do something new? You know, was a, a parent very critical of you growing up? You know, have you not forgiven yourself for something? Do you not think you're worthy or deserve good things like encouragement, progress, and growth? You know, it's time to get real with yourself and visit places in your past that you don't want to visit to get to the bottom of this if you find yourself comparing. Because I guarantee this little thing, this is a root of something that started in the past for something that needs to be acknowledged, needs to be healed so that you can take the coaching and run. There's many, many, many things. I promise you all the critical things and the things you're saying about yourself, it's a learned bad habit. And with being intentional and making a decision, you know, with, and with God's help, you can stop. You can be healed from that and you will not have to compare and you can have, you know, you can allow yourself to grow. You can have those thoughts. You can be where you're at and people can move ahead. And maybe you guys started at the same time and they can move ahead and you're going to, and you'll be just fine if you heal that part, if you get to the bottom of that. Okay. So it's time to heal and it's time to get to the root if you are comparing or if you see that in a teammate. If, depending on how close you are and they want to have a conversation with someone, know that that could be it. That could be stopping, you know, some of their, you know, progress because, you know, I know for sure if you have, if that is your story, if there was a parent that was critical of you, you know, it's time to acknowledge, wow, you know, admitting to yourself, you know, what they said to me, the, the critical things they said to me, you're not this, you're never going to amount to anything, you're not going to survive in the world, you're stupid, you're not, whatever it was, you're not doing that right, not all that you know, you can acknowledge, you know what, that really, that really hurt me. That really crippled me. I'm seeing that these critical words that, that was said to me, I see it spilling into all areas of my life. And it was because of whatever that was the root is because of that. Oh, you know, what if, what year, let, I'm just using parents, for example, what if they were being told those things, they were being hurt too. And they just said it to me. And just remember those things that they were saying, it's not true. Not true. If their parents were telling them those things, they didn't want, they didn't want that for themselves either, but they didn't know any different. So it's like, you know what? They didn't want to be told that either. They're hurting too. It's not true. Those words are not true, but it can stop with me. Maybe it went on generation, generation of all this criticalness and you're not this, but it can stop here with me and heal, right? So, sorry, I'm looking at my notes. Mm, got that. Okay. So here's a free, I like to call this a freedom point. This is a freedom point right here. So when I heard this, I thought, wow, I've never heard this. This just kind of flipped something for me. So freedom point. So if you're struggling with comparing, we're just, we're going to talk ACN because it's ACN, but if you're struggling with comparing an ACN and you're just like, man, I can't, can't seem to get ahead or these people are moving forward. I mean, realize there's some people that come into this business that do a lot of growing before they came into ACN. So how can you compare that? How can you compare you're doing your growing in this business, but someone else comes in and they just come in and they take off with the coaching and they take off with the system and they just, they got to RD like so quick. I mean, how can you compare? You don't know what happened in their life previously to coming into the business, their hard times, what they had to go through and grow. They might have done all that without you even seeing. And it's just maybe you're like me and you did most of your growing in ACN. So a lot of times, you know, uh, people, I mean, I wanted so badly for people to see me in production or getting a lot of customers or I, I was caring what people were thinking. I wanted people to see me uh, 
yeah, in production, like, oh, she's really doing things. She's really, uh, her team's weak. You know what? Nothing was happening. Nothing's going on. You know what I had to do at that time? Uh, my work was, yes, I was doing some things for ATN I, as much as I could because I had a lot of things to get through. I would do things. I would show up to events. I would get customers. I'm doing things little by little. But you know what I was really hitting hard? Hard. Every day was personal development and sermons. And for me, reading the Bible. I mean, my head was glued to personal development of video all the time, all the time, because I was struggling with fear. I was struggling with insecurity and I was struggling with, yeah, comparing. And so no one could see all that that I was doing as I'm in, you know, in my regular life. I'm not an event, but that's what I was doing. That's what, that's what I had to do. And it was hard, but it was needed. It was so needed because now today, I mean, I'm still growing, of course, but today now, because of all that work uh, to myself and getting through that, I'm able to take the coaching now and run. I wouldn't have been able to do that for there's things that Miss Driscoll gives me to say and do because I asked for her coaching. And, you know, I guarantee you uh, before that growth. I wouldn't have been able to take her coaching and say it because I was too scared or I was too, um, yeah, scared, too insecure, too much, too what someone's going to say if I say this. And it doesn't sound like just too much stuff going on. Okay. So I think it's really important. So if you're doing a lot of work and a lot of growth right now, and there's a lot of things where you're just like, man, I can't get through this or through that. I encourage you to get to the root of what that thing is. Find out where did it start? Why do I think that? How come I'm comparing? How come I'm being critical? Why, why, why is that? Ask all those questions, get to the bottom of it, because I guarantee you it's so much better on the other side when you get to that route, and then you're able to move freely in AC, and you're able to not think so much when it, when someone gives you a challenge or a coach says, Hey, I want you to train. Hey, I want you to present. You're able to do it now because you don't have all that comparing in that junk in you. Okay. So definitely I want you to leave with, don't compare yourself to someone else's growth. It's completely different. It's like, there's no way you can compare what you've been through to what someone else has been through. There's different things. Some people might not have experienced, you know, maybe some people have gone through something with a with an alcoholic parent. You can't compare that with somebody else because they've never gone through that. Or maybe, you know, they were bullied, but you weren't. Like, you just can't, you can't do it. You just can't do it. Stay in your lane. Don't be the pie eating contest and keep looking, looking what they're doing. It's your business. It's your growth. These are skills that can be learned. You can do this. We're all the same, but we, we cannot compare where each other, all of us have been. So let me check. Yep. That is what I have. That is something that, um, I've had to grow through and that's helped me to acknowledge that that's what I was doing. And when that, when someone said, you know, someone, there's people that have grown before they came to us and they already went through the hard work. You're just going through it right now, doing all that that helped me so much. I was like, oh yeah, wow. I didn't think of that. I didn't think they, before they got there, they possibly went through things and did the growth already. And then it was like, you know what? Let me just settle in here. You know what? I have a lot of work to do. I need to work on this insecurity. I need to work on this fear. I need to work on this. And let me get on every leadership training program, new thoughts. Let me just reprogram here and that's what I had to do and it was hard and it was but it was needed it's hard but it's needed and so critical and so vital so I want to encourage you if you're in a stage right now of a lot of growth it's a good thing it's going to pay off it just it makes you such a better leader such a better person um, better leader for your team you're able to have more compassion understand it's awesome yes it is hard but it's so vital and so needed so I want to encourage you keep learning keep um, knowing that you can learn these skills and that you are going to get better be patient with yourself let yourself grow give yourself the grace to grow and that is what I have for you guys so I really appreciate you guys thank you for letting me speak to you today and it means a lot.